Congressional leaders have written a new letter addressed to Inspector General of the Intelligence Community on specifics of whistleblower David Grush's congressional testimony. Congressman Tim Burchett tweeted yesterday, during the UAP hearing, David Grush testified he could not provide specific details about UAP crash retrieval programs or reverse engineering programs, but said the intelligence community inspector general could. So my colleagues and I wrote to him to ask for details. The letter, signed by representatives Tim Burchett, Jared Moskowitz, and Anna Polina Luna, Nancy Mace, Eric Burleson, and Andy Ogles, who have largely been center, uh, front and center leading the UAP inquiries on Capitol Hill, they write that considering Mr. Grush's testimony was under oath, we request answers to the following questions. Which intelligence community members, positions, facilities, military bases, or other actors are involved with UAP crash retrieval programs, directly or indirectly? And which intelligence community members, positions, facilities, military bases, or other actors are involved with UAP reverse engineering programs, directly or indirectly? Mm. Meanwhile, recently, Jeremy Corbell stressed the need for government transparency about UFOs in a conversation with Chris Cuomo. Let's watch. They want to make an example of David Grush. When I say they, I mean the people that do not and are not for transparency and disclosure. Friends of mine that are not for it from the legacy UFO programs, like the long durational ones, they say, I'm with you as a friend. But no, do not kick a sleeping dog. This doesn't get out. I go, why? Tell me why. Give me one reason why. What's so scary that you have to be daddy and keep this from the American public? Not once has somebody answered me appropriately, clearly, with facts that allowed me to get behind that. Not once. And it makes me think this is all about power and control of small groups that don't want to give it up. And the closer we get to the goodies, the more pushback we're going to get. He was saying, I can't tell you here because this is a public hearing. And if I do, they will literally snatch me up, put me in jail, make an example out of me and scare everybody else that wants to come forward. And the cover up continues. Well, I think this is exactly what we've been calling for on the show for a while. Yes, Robbie. the specific actors who are guilty of this alleged cover-up, the agencies involved, the person involved. Grush said he couldn't say exactly who that was, but that this inspector general does know. So they have directed their inquiry to the right person. I'm sure they're going to get a response, no comment, because these individuals need to be compelled to give up this information. I, I suspect they're not going to go, oh, well, I, Tim Burchett seems like a, like a cool dude, but now that he's asked me nicely, I'm going to actually give up uh, the goodies, as was described in this interview, like that's obviously not going to happen. Well, I guess there is an argument that he's willing to talk, but just off the record, right? That you know, I, I you know, I, mean, I can't publicly say these things for national Congress security Congress passed a lot to compel or... Joe Biden to force the the intelligence community to tell the public everything they know about the origins of COVID. And that was like, it was bipartisan legislation. It, it, like everybody voted for it. Yeah. Joe Biden signed it. Like finally. Then what, what, is, what did that mean in practice? It gave us a little, a little spread, a little handout summarizing what was already public information. So in that case, I think the argument is the government is I was not mad. wanting to disclose their own involvement right. in funding some of the research that even when explicitly to compelled to do so by bipartisan Congress and the president. Right. So the interests of the government in protecting its own interests are clear. Yeah. What is the argument here? Is it do we believe that is this evidence that there are really are UAPs because the government isn't potentially willing to do more disclosures? I mean, with this and wrapping in the COVID origins thing, which I am still so miffed about. It, this is, you know, this goes to the corruption of our democracy at the hands of what I'm concerned about a lot of time, which is a permanent non-elected bureaucratic state that even, even in a clear case where the democratic forces, the president, the people, the members of Congress give a clear directive reflecting the will of the people, we still don't get it because there are all these secret keepers that are just not accountable, that operate their own little, uh, this is the deep state idea, the state within a state that is not, that it remains regardless of which administration is in power and has its own agenda, um, a, a neoconservative foreign policy agenda, a very kind of cloak and dagger secrecy that has seeped into COVID and some other areas. And, and maybe this, I don't know, I can't tell. Um, and, and, but it is, it's, it's real, it, like it exists. I mean, they, you know, maybe they think they're doing the, the best they're keeping. We're not, we can't handle the truth. And they, they, you know, think of themselves as telling the noble lie or whatever it is. is but it does exist. It's not democratic at all. 
I set them basically an acknowledgement that the only way we're going to really know about any of this is if someone takes it upon themselves to be a really substantive whistleblower yes. and not just say, I saw or I heard someone tell me they yeah, saw, for sure. but to get the photographs, to steal the bodies, to chip off a piece of the hull of the spacecraft, whatever it is, and bring it before the public. Yes. I, again, in the to bring up the COVID example, right, so, there is some whistleblower now. They haven't come forward. They told various um, uh writers and the Wall Street Journal that uh, that the U.S. actually does have intelligence, that those three scientists got sick first in the lab, and that that would point pr pretty conclusively to a lab leak theory. Um, those people haven't come forward or sh you know, shared what documents with you and I and the public at large, so we're, you know, we're reliant on reporting from people who purport to have seen it. Um, so, yeah, something like that needs to occur in both cases, where we get direct access to the, is, the information. Is the implication also that the aliens are also complicit in wanting to remain secret? Well, they're dead, right? They did they crash landed? Well, no, we people have all these sightings constantly. Not that every oh, single right. UAP is aliens, yeah. but this is an ongoing phenomenon. So if you believe like that little, some little portion pixies, of pixies like they like to play tricks on people and then stay out of stay hidden from view like some fantasy medieval creature. I mean, look at this. This is my <laughs> If the if the government, you know, if if they were, let's say, if the government were, you know, killing and stacking up yeah. alien bodies in a warehouse somewhere, or were somehow yeah. adversarial to the aliens, you would presume, given all of this interest in them, that there would be plenty of advantage of them coming forward and revealing themselves. But as described, they're furtive. They speed away when observed. Yeah. That's ostensibly the difficulty in getting good pictures of the yes. craft. There are no pictures that we know of of the bodies, even though Gresh's testimony is that he knows someone who has seen the body. Right. You know, and if, Again, if that's this is the case. The behavior of fictional creatures, pixies, leprechauns. <laughs> no. I mean, so what you're, um, sa you're saying is that that's a convenient narrative yes. for if something isn't real to yes. explain why you can't put your hands or eyes on it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So that's what I think about the, identif the identification of actual visitation by actual alien um, matter, al alien bodies. I find that extremely unlikely, even though that is what has been alleged by, by Grush and others. Um, the, the space crafts, or, or it could be satellites, some technology, some evidence of some off-world presence is a little bit um, easier to believe. I still think it's probably just technology from our government or other governments that we want to keep secret for some reason. Um, because as, we've, as we keep kind of arriving at you and I when we talk about this, if the military industrial complex wants to ramp up funding for uh, if, you know for their own benefit for whatever yeah. scaring the public into thinking that there are aliens would be the most easy and effective way to do that sure. um, as we saw you know in the wake of 9/11 the the american people would have accepted any violation of their civil liberties an endless amount of military spending and budget you know for this purported existential threat to um, to the west to america but to the, christianity but the, the one problem i have with that argument is that the, the people who are the whistleblowers that are really advancing the argument that there are these UAPs that the government is hiding don't really seem to be making an argument that they're adversarial. I'm not getting the sense that there's the government is hiding them, there's a plot afoot, no. they're, there's uh, Independence Day is about to go down, we need them to tell the truth so that we can defend ourselves they're as a aliens. race, you know. They're I mean, the they're scrolls not, they're not, from the Marvel they're Universe. They're also not saying that. They're not saying, oh, they're going to come down here and solve the energy crisis. But, they're, yeah. but they are neutral enough that, to me, if this really were a plot to support military spending, they would put a little bit more of a dark cast on mm -hmm. the characterization of the aliens and the threat. You know, none of the, uh, there's no allegation that the wep that the, the ships have weapons or that have, they, they behaved in malevolent ways. The pilots describe them kind of whizzing by and just trying to mind their own business, not that they're colliding with spacecraft or hurting people or abducting people. Like that, that is not the narrative right now. And in fact, um, in an interview, I think just yesterday, uh, Jeremy Corbell, Dismiss the idea that UFOs are being uh, or were or, or private technology, aerospace engineering technology, corporate technology, mm -hmm. hostile enemy technology, anything like that, that would also justify an arms race and more defense spending on America's end. So, I mean, if this is if this is the plot, 
then it's not being very well effectuated. Because also, I think maybe this is just my bias of who our audience is, but it does seem to me like there's a, a significant overlap between the UFO community, the believing community, and people who are very hostile to military interventionism. And so again, I, 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 I can see that how that could be an argument, but I'm not seeing it play out in that particular mm. way. Yeah, I don't know. Um, it's, it is interesting, and we continue to cover it. And I hope that uh, Tim Burchett and the others are able to finally get answers from this inspector general. I'm not holding uh, my breath on it, but uh, you know, it, it, it has felt a little bit like the cat's out of the bag in the last couple of weeks because there's been so much public interest in the subject and so many people coming forward, not with direct knowledge, but secondhand knowledge. So at some point, someone with direct knowledge has to come forward, and that's the, the day we're looking forward to. In fact, more rising right after this.